Over the past few years, technology has very quickly been improving. The fastest growing area that is the most interesting for all model builders is the 3D printing space. 3D printers have improved vastly over the past three years, and today I'll show you how to make an absolutely amazing 3D printed model using a DLP resin printer. This particular printer I'm using is called the Anycubic Photon, and it's one of the cheapest on the market. Often we associate cheap with poor quality, however this printer is definitely an exception to that way of thinking. All you have to do is look at the quality of the models being printed. Setup is very straightforward. The instructions are easy to read and understand and the printer comes 99% assembled apart from the small doorknob that needs to be attached. Because the curing process of the resin is achieved by using an LCD screen and UV light, it's important that the LCD screen is clean to avoid imperfections in the final print. For this I'm using isopropyl alcohol to ensure the screen is fingerprint and dust free. To level the bed, it's as simple as lowering the build platform mounting arm. Next, loosen the build plate using the supplied allen key so it can move and tilt freely. The distance between the build plate and the LCD screen is about the thickness of a piece of paper. With the paper in place, carefully reattach the build plate and test that the paper can move freely. The build plate is then lowered incrementally until the paper starts to feel drag against the LCD screen and the build plate. Once you reach that spot where the paper is just starting to become squashed between the two surfaces, we can square up the build plate and tighten the screw to fix everything securely in position. Just to make sure everything is going to work properly, we give the LCD screen and UV light a test. If the picture on the display matches what you can actually see on the LCD screen, then you know everything is working correctly. When installing the resin vat, there are two small limit screws at the back of the printer. Simply insert the vat until it presses against those two screws and then tighten the screws that hold the vat tightly into position. There are a number of places to find models to print. One of my favourites is called Thingiverse. It's got thousands of user submitted models available to download for free and if you feel so inclined you can send the creator a donation for their hard work. Another great site to download free models is My Mini Factory and it's very similar to Thingiverse. If you want to make your own designs but don't want to learn complex 3D design programs straight away, it might be worth looking at Tinkercad. I've designed all sorts of models using this free online 3D building tool including this 20 foot shipping container. Basically your imagination is the limit. Look at how easy it was to create a HO scale brick wall in just a few minutes. If you had the patience you could build an entire house doing this. With your model ready to print, simply download the STL file and import that into the Anycubic slicing program that comes with the printer. This program helps finalize and prepare the model for printing. Supports get added to the base of the model. This is briefly explained in the instructions that come with the printer. I recommend using heavy supports on all the corners and supplement them with light supports to help prevent sagging and warping. The more supports you have, the lower your risk of having a failed print. However, with more supports, it means more cleanup and sanding. But as you'll see later, cleanup and sanding is a breeze. A couple of print limitations you may run into can be seen here. Every printer has its limitations to what can and can't be printed. Some things turn out better than others. And part orientation plays a big role in achieving high quality prints. Be sure to visit Boulder Creek Railroad for a more in-depth review on what sort of problems to expect and how to avoid them when designing and printing models using DLP resin printers. Once the supports are added and the exposure settings have been set, we can slice the model and send it to the printer. The settings will vary depending on the resin you are using, but I've found between 10 and 12 seconds is a good starting point. If you're using a new resin that you haven't tried before, I suggest designing a small test cube that you can print to see which settings give you the best results before committing to a 9 hour print. There are a few options for resin choice. 
The Anycubic green resin works very well and it comes with the printer. I haven't had any problems with it so far. The Monocure Grey also works well, however it needs slightly longer curing times due to the opaqueness compared to the clear green resin. The resin needs a good shake prior to use, but try to avoid shaking it too vigorously as you will introduce thousands of tiny bubbles into the resin and it could ruin your print. Gently swirling the bottle seems to work well. The model gets loaded into the printer and now all we need to do is hit print and sit back and wait. The print times vary really only with height. The taller the model, the longer it will take to print. As an example, a print that has an exposure of 10 seconds per layer will take about nine and a half hours to print if it goes right to the top of the build area. It doesn't matter if it's one model in the build area or 10 models, it will always take nine hours and 30 minutes. The good thing about these printers is they are more efficient and faster if you can fill up the build plate with models. Once the model is ready to be removed from the printer, we can begin the cleaning process. It's actually a straightforward process and not at all difficult, but just be sure to wear some gloves and avoid direct skin contact with uncured resin as it is a toxic substance. If it does get on your skin, be sure to wash it off with soapy water. The included small plastic spatula is used to carefully remove the model from the build plate, but if you have a good sharp metal spatula, that will generally work a little bit better. To remove the uncured resin from the model, it's recommended to soak it in isopropyl alcohol. Although in Australia, isopropyl alcohol tends to be a little bit expensive in large amounts, but I've found methylated spirits from the hardware store is much cheaper and does a similar job. I use a three-step process which involves dunking the model in a cup of methylated spirits for about 20 seconds or until most of the uncured resin has dissolved. Next I dunk it in some clean methylated spirits and finally I dunk it in water to wash away the residual methylated spirits. To get the printer ready for another print, we simply wipe down the build plate and reinstall it back inside the printer and we're ready to print again. Once you're finished printing, the excess resin is filtered out before pouring it back into the bottle and the vat is given a wipe down with some paper towels. Now it's clean and ready to be put away until next time. It's recommended not to leave resin sitting in the vat for more than two days. To post-cure the model, I place it under a UV lamp. The spinning display stand is optional, however I find it gives the model a more even final cure. You can also place the model out in the sun. I also rotate the model after about 10 minutes to make sure all sides are thoroughly cured. Finally, we treat the model just like any other model we might buy from the shops. We cut away the unwanted material, but just be careful doing this. It's tempting just to rip the model away from its base. However, the resin is quite brittle once cured and doing so may cause the model to chip in unwanted places, which just means more filing and sanding later. It may not be necessary, but just to make sure, once I removed the base, I gave the inside a quick cure under the UV lamp for about five minutes. As you can see, this stuff sands exceptionally well. It's a breeze to sand back and takes very little effort. Even the technique of scraping away imperfections with a hobby knife works well with the resin and by using a few different steps of sanding, starting with the 180 grit and then gradually stepping down to the 1200 grit, we can get an ultra smooth finish. Once finished, you can paint the model as you would any other plastic model kit. Or what I'll be doing with this model is creating a rubber mold so I can make multiple copies of this quickly and easily using cheaper, faster setting resin. I hope you enjoyed this quick tutorial on using the Anycubic resin 3D printer. And if you like this video and would like to help support the channel, be sure to visit patreon.com or my website. Cheers and thanks for watching.